if there's ever a point where Sam shows up or Ben and Sam cross paths, I think that would be such a great one for magic to be a hologram for because of all of the intersecting experiences. Well, it is so nice to meet you guys. Thanks so much for chatting with me today. Well, great. Great talking to you. Oh my gosh. I'm such a huge fan of the show. Um, I love Quantum Leap. And I want to start you guys off with kind of a fun question because your characters don't get to be the hologram too much. So if you could accompany Ben on any past, future, or potential leap, what would it be? I just feel like because of what Jen might be able to help out with best, like I'm trying to pitch like a that he leaps into like a CD underbelly or an organized crime kind of situation. I think that would be fun. I would love to do that. You Get need a like an trouble. Ocean's Eleven episode. Yeah. <laughs> I think that Jen would really like do well with, yeah, some kind of heist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's good on her feet. I think I would want to do like a, a like an episode that was either a concert or like Ben like leaping into, you know, some some like David Bowie figure or or like a musical. I think that something that requires um Ian's musical knowledge would be really fun cuz often we see them being like a smart aleck, but they also are a creative, so I'd like to see them use the creative side more. Yeah, I don't really have anything that comes to mind, so uh, I'm whatever. I'm I'm good for uh, uh, yeah. Uh, awesome, cool. Or- it's 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 always a hard one. I threw it at you guys. <laughs> I ha- I have one that I would like to see for Ernie. Ooh, I would love to hear Ooh. that. Oh. Yeah, me too. I just think it would be interesting if there's ever a point where Sam shows up or Ben and Sam cross paths. I think that would be such a great one for magic to be a hologram for because of all of the intersecting experiences. You know? Sure. Yeah, that would be that would be very interesting. Um, exciting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Fingers crossed for all of those because those all sound amazing. I would love to see them. <laughs> yeah, me too. Good. Well, I mean, it, it's been great to get more insight on your characters' personal lives this season. So, um, I mean, Ernie, I would love to start with you due to everything that's been going on with Magic. You know, he he turned to alcohol after they lost Ben. Um, and given yeah. how unpredictable the leaps can be and just the project as a whole, do you think he's reached a place in his recovery where he can handle um, what might be coming down the pipeline? I think he wants to believe that. And I think uh, Beth probably uh, is a little suspicious, but um, I think he's really committed to um, to to yeah to seeing you know the project go to the point where we get Ben back. But uh, I think he's still vulnerable, and I think he's still. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of stress that he he's taking on himself um, and he separates himself from the team because I think he feels responsible for the team in a way that maybe he shouldn't necessarily. But, um, yeah, so I think he's, um, he's 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 doing well now, but, um, you know, who knows what comes next. On that same note, what was your reaction when you found out that Magic was going to be paired with Beth? I was so excited. I did not see it coming. Well, I didn't see it coming either, but I think it, it makes sense. Um, you know, he's, she's someone that he's known and respected. And um, and the fact that she was somehow there when he really needed someone to be there and she continues to be there, um, especially when someone has seen your flaws and they still, you know, they're still there. They don't leave. Um, so I really like that relationship. I'm kind of curious as to how it lasts or where it goes. but. Um, she certainly has, uh, uh, you know, made it possible for him to um, stay the course and, um, and and summon the courage to to get this done. Ian has some romance as well, Mason. You know, um, Rachel is in the picture. She was very upfront with what she needs in order for the relationship to work. So yeah. where do you feel Ian's head is at with everything that's been happening? I feel so bad for them. You know, <laughs> like I really, I really pity Ian. They're, they're, they're really in it. They're in the deep end. Um, 
I think I, I, I love a, I love a partner who's very upfront with what they need and what they require in order to, uh, to continue the relationship. I think that that is <laughs> that kind of communication, uh, Ian really respects, um, I'm happy that they decided to give it a go, you know, in the three years that we didn't see, see the two of them really interact. It's nice to like, when, when they, the writers, you know, told me that when we check back in, you know, in season two, that like Ian and Rachel are back together. I was like, that's nice. Cause it gives Ian a counterpoint to be able to play off of someone that isn't directly involved in quantum leap and can sort of provide um, a, a moral backbone that is from a position that isn't as uh, involved. Whereas, you know, like all of us are obviously going to be biased about anything involving the program, anything involving Ben, because we are in it just too deep. Um, whereas Rachel can kind of see things from a more pragmatic, you know, standpoint. Um, so as a character, I think it was, it's really helpful for Ian to have someone like that around to kind of balance both, you know, sides of their lives as they're making really um, potentially dangerous, you know, decisions <laughs> about the future of the program. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just really, I'm really grateful that they brought Alice back. I love doing scenes with her, and uh, yeah, I'm, it's, it's been, it's been such a good, a good time. It also feels like the team is in a, a precarious situation when it comes to kind of the the Addison, Ben, and Tom situation because. I mean, they they love all of them. You know, they've seen Addison with Ben. They they've seen her with Tom. Nana Rissa, given the support that you know Jen has offered Addison in the past, do you think she's a little bit split on how to help her friend navigate everything that's happening? Yeah, for sure. I think um, also because Ben's out there and like we're still trying to bring him home, you know. Um, but I think I think. Um, you know, Jen is just concerned about how, uh, about the health of her friend and how, and how her friend Addison is doing. I think over the three years that have passed between season one and season two, Addison went through a lot, you know, she lost her partner. She grieved him. And we, on some level, even like there was a breakdown of the family of our team by the way of the project shutting down. So Addison suffered a huge loss. I mean, having said that, she then found Tom, which I think I won't speak for everybody, but I know that Jen on a, in a lot of ways is very grateful to Tom for helping to sort of Addison strong. She's going to survive every, anything, but helping her find kind of some balance again. Um, I think ultimately Addison's a big girl. There's, there's no children at this table. We're all, we all know how to take care of ourselves and I know she will. Um, and I feel like the most Jen can do is just be there for her when she needs a little help. Well, I have a, another question for all of you guys. And that is, what is a plot line you'd each like to see explored for your characters that hasn't been done yet? Is there anything that you're hoping will be upcoming or just if you could choose any storyline, what would it be? I really liked going back into the past. Like I did, I did love establishing our, um, our characters like history with one another when we were doing the episodes that were earlier on in the program. Um, there was something fun about like playing more hopeful, naive, like early versions of our characters and being able to act in real time with Raymond without having to be conscious of like the rules of being a hologram. So, um, I, yeah, I, I've always hoped that they would circle back to doing a few more little flashback moments that show us getting to know each other and really establishing, you know, how, how we all essentially fell in love, you know, and became the family that we did because we're, we, we are so close, you know, when you're, when you join the show and you see where we are, you know, in season one and in season two, like we are a very close group of individuals. So it's always interesting to see how people get to that point. I think. I think it would be fun to see, um, for the audience, to, you know, perhaps for because of Jen's background, maybe there's been some loose threads that have been sort of left dangling that based on old brash decisions she has maybe made, maybe not the most legal decisions or people 
that she worked with before she found this team. Um, um, and I don't know how some of those people feel about her not being a part of being the old gen anymore. Um, so I think it would be interesting to see, uh, uh, you know, perhaps a little bit of Jen's coming back past coming back to haunt her a little bit or having to pay maybe some dues that were left unpaid. Um, just so we see a little bit more of, of where Jen came from and, and why she is the way she is. Ooh, absolutely. I'm hoping for that as well. That would be an incredible plot line. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, it is about time for me to wrap. Thank you guys so much for chatting with me today. You were lovely to speak with. Um, And again, yeah, I can't wait to see what comes up next on the show. 